Today, we're talking about how investing in yourself can pay off. Here to discuss is Beth Lawler, U.S. Bank Private Wealth Management and Affluent Wealth Management President. Beth, thanks so much for being here. Caroline, thank you so much for having me. It's a pleasure. I'm really excited to talk about this topic. I'm excited to hear about it because I hear about and talk about investment strategies all the time, but not necessarily this one, Beth. So tell us first, why is it so important to invest in ourselves? Well, it provides us freedom to do what we want to do. We all have our personal aspirations, our career aspirations, goals, dreams, hopes, all of that. And when you have financial security and financial independence, it allows you that freedom to pursue your dreams. So how do we invest in ourselves? What does that actually look like? Well, I think there's two parts to this answer, frankly. You know, one, I think the first part is related to your career path, and the second is related to your financial path. So, of course, they're closely related for sure. But when we think about our own career path, my biggest suggestion to folks is to create your own internal board of directors. What does that mean? You know, oftentimes I think particularly as women, we tend to check in with our partners and our best friends, people that will tell us what we want to hear. And oftentimes that's not always the best advice. So when you're faced with a big decision, whether it's financial or otherwise, a better approach is to create a, a board of directors of people who that you respect but that aren't always going to tell you what you want to hear, but what you need to hear. Could be in your industry, outside of your industry. It's really just a thoughtful approach for how to make big decisions. Um, another thing that I think is really important is investing in your own financial path. So a great way for women to get started is to take inventory of their own financial status. So your finances, as I said earlier, affect your career aspirations, your hopes, dreams, your personal um, goals to save for college, whether it's you know perhaps a child that has special needs, whether it's a parent that's aging that you need to care for, whatever your personal situation may be, whether you wanna buy a house, for example, create an action plan with specific steps on how you can make progress. Share your plan with someone you trust, whether that's a financial advisor, whether it's somebody on your board of directors. Um, when you think about making career changes, whether that's a promotion internally or leaving your firm and starting a new firm, every career change is an opportunity. Use it as an opportunity to increase your savings in your 401k. Take a look at all of your employer's benefits, whether that's healthcare savings accounts. If you can't contribute 10%, contribute 5%, but take every benefit for education and everything that you can do to increase your financial status so it gives you that freedom. How should someone early in their career think about it differently than someone who's further along? Honestly, Caroline, they just need to get started. I have two children in their early 20s. And what I say to them all the time is contribute to your 401k as much as possible, especially if your company has a matching gift program. I'll give you an example. For young people, the most important thing they have is time. Compound interest is such a powerful thing. So if a 25-year-old invested today $200 a month, that equates to $395,000 when they're 65. If a woman or, or a man waits till they're 35 to start contributing that $200 a month, it, it doesn't um, accumulate to 395, it accumulates to 200,000. So what a big difference, almost a $200,000 gap if you wait 10 years to start investing that $200 a month. And what sort of progress are you seeing from those women who are actually investing in themselves? It's, uh, it's unbelievable. I mean, we've really seen significant progress in the last couple of years. And I think a lot of that has to do with the pandemic. People took that opportunity, in particular women who sometimes don't want to necessarily show their cards, if you will, or say that they don't know a lot about investing. They listened to podcasts. They read about the markets. They talked to folks. You had the privacy of your own home to continue to learn about financial well-being. And as such, that has bridged the gap quite a bit. Younger women are more confident. Uh, that they can retire when they want to retire. They're more confident about investing. And we often see that women are more conservative than men in investing, but the returns tend to be 40 basis points or 0.4% uh, better. And, and our survey shows that that's pretty powerful because over time, as I talked about compound interest, it's amazing what the difference is. So Beth, we have to wrap up. Just what's the action point to take home and do today? 
What I would say is one, create your own internal board of directors. Have that be a tapestry to fall on when you create big decisions and your in your approach to big decision making. Two, I would say oftentimes women, men, whomever it is, we fail in careers, in jobs, in different things that we do, but don't take failure as something that's so awful. Take it as a gift. You know, that's happened to me. I was laid off 10 years ago and it was the greatest gift that was ever given to me because I was able to be resilient, to navigate my network, to gain more confidence. It's really a tremendous gift and it happens to everybody. Um, number three, I would say get started. Just get started today. And for older women, increase your contributions, whatever they may be, because it, financial independence is power. Beth Lawler, U.S. Bank, thank you so much for your insights. It's been a pleasure to be here today, Caroline. Thank you for having me.